my name is Vanessa and welcome to Ortho Refresh. This video will review how to place a thumb spica splint. That is forearm based thumb spica splint. This may be IP joint included and extend to the tip of the thumb or it may be IP joint free and allow for motion at the distal phalanx. Thumb spica splints are appropriate for scaphoid fractures, first metacarpal fractures, CMC fracture dislocation. It also may be appropriate if the initial x-rays are negative, but there is pain and swelling about the thumb and radial wrist, and the patient is uncomfortable in a thumb spica splint from home medical store. Enjoy. A ready-made splint, scissors, two inch padding, tape, and three inch elastic bandage. Tear off some pieces of tape, so they are within reach at the end of the splint. Then open the elastic bandage. Some packages have a red dotted line in the middle. Twist to open the plastic. It's much easier to take off. I recommend taking those sharp clips and throwing them in the garbage. They tend to hurt people. To begin, position the patient in a comfortable seated position. This could be at a desk with the arm resting on the tabletop or on top of a gurney or exam table with pillows under the arm for support. Advise the patient to point fingers toward the ceiling and thumb towards the shoulder. Start with wrapping the padding around the wrist. This provides a place to anchor the padding to begin working around the hand and thumb. Working your way up towards the hand, Go through the first web space by tearing the cast padding. Then come around the hand, and now go up and around the thumb, again tearing from the bottom to go around the thumb through the first web space. Go around the thumb again, tearing from the bottom. There should be no tension in the padding. I've now, now gone around the thumb three times. Now work your way back down and around through the first web space to cover any gaps, overlap by 50%, making sure to cover that area of gap where the splint may rub. Now overlapping by 50%, working your way down. There should be no tension in the padding, simply laying the padding down onto the skin. As you get about halfway down the forearm, choose an ending point where you go around and around and around about three to four times. We don't have to go as far proximal because the forearm piece is just a support or base for the thumb spica. Now to add a couple more layers to the thumb, we make a cuff, tearing a small piece, folding it lengthwise, and wrapping it around the distal aspect of the cast padding so the splint does not rub. Now to get the splint. Take the splint out of its packaging and apply it to the radial aspect of the forearm, wrist, and thumb, measuring just inside the padding at both ends. Very important to pull the edges of the padding over the fiberglass at both ends before you get it wet. Get the splint wet, use room temperature to cold water, which will help it set up fast, wring out as much water as possible. Place the splint in a towel. Fold the towel over the splint and wring out as much water as possible. I call this the burrito trick. Holding the elastic bandage in my left hand, I unroll it a little and about four to five inches in, I make a cut. This will go in the first web space. I have asked the patient to help hold the splint while I get the ace wrap ready. I make my cut about four to five inches in, and this goes in the first web space. Laying the, the ace bandage directly against the skin and padding. With about 50% tension, I go around the hand and up around the thumb. Using my scissors to make a cut from the bottom about halfway, this goes through that first web space. Wrapping around the thumb, I have no tension going down into the first web space. I make another cut to come through the first web space as I've gone around the hand, making sure to look at any tails, folding any raw edges, 
This has to look good and it has to serve a purpose. Overlap by about 50%. Our goal is to use one ace wrap for a short arm splint and then using tape to hold in place. I use this time to educate the patient on the three rules of having a splint. It should be covered with a plastic bag for showering. The second rule, they should not shove anything inside the splint. And the third rule is that it should not be used as a weapon to hit people. I tell everybody. Then I take some pieces of tape and make half strips to go around the thumb and hold any edges in and hold the ace bandage in around the thumb and the palm. I call this tape art. It usually makes the patient smile. This splint would be considered a thumb IP joint free as the tip of the thumb is able to move a little in the confines of the splint. Here are those three rules again. In addition to these rules, I remind the patient it's important for them to move the fingers but not use them too much and also keep the hand elevated as much as possible. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that video was helpful for you. If you are interested in seeing more, please hit subscribe. Ortho Refresh wants to be a tool in your tool belt as you care for patients. If you have any questions, please leave those below. We will get back to you as soon as we can. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Ortho Refresh is on Instagram and Facebook. Please check us out there. We want to have an interactive conversation. We want to know what do you need to hear about? What do you want to be refreshed on? Ortho Refresh aims to provide continuing orthopedic education at your fingertips. Thanks for watching.